Why bombing a live coding interview made me a better programmer. Sometimes you must experience what you're terrified of to realize it isn't that bad by Emily Wood. So I wanted to react to this article because a lot of people are scared to just completely screw up the interview. I was for a long time um, and I still am, right? Like if I haven't interviewed for a while and I go to an interview, I still have some anxiety that comes up and, you know, really the solution is just to do it get over with. You realize it's not as bad, then you do another one, then you do another one. It's just, you know, gradual exposure to it. Um, but this is a really, really common problem. And the biggest problem with this is so many people, they don't even apply because they're so scared of this and they never apply. And that's a huge problem. So we're going to hear what Emily Wood has to say. It is every early career programmer's biggest fear, the fabled live coding interview. I'm sure you've heard tell of it, usually in whispered tones under the cover of night. My worst ever interview. Let's hear it. I remember applying for my second programming role and going through multiple rounds of interviews. I frantically crammed trying to solve every depth first search problem on Elite Code through one lunch break. Yikes. Wow. Dream big, right? After a screening call, a one-hour behavioral interview, and a take-home technical assessment, I was over the moon to make it to the fourth and final round. Side note, why does landing a junior programming role require more rounds than winning the X Factor? Um, because junior developers lie and they're full of shit. Like a lot of them are. Not everyone, of course, but I would say most are. Let me make that clear. But there are a lot of low-integrity people trying to get into this industry, and they're fucking it up for everyone. That's the reality. Um, I asked the HR manager what to expect in the last round and whether there was anything I could prepare. She explained that it would be a chance to discuss my take-home assignment and ways I might expand upon it. All right, a bit nerve-wracking, but manageable. Okay, so. Um, take-home project. See, a lot of, well, man, some people really prefer, so I prefer coding challenges because a take-home project takes longer usually. And I feel like I'm not, my time isn't being respected if you can't assess my time. Like if you're going to take up my time, you're going to take up your time too. I think that's, maybe that sounds arrogant to some people, but I, like, I do believe that, you know, even when I was a newer developer, my time was worth something. I didn't realize how much it was worth. And I, I think some junior developers need to, you know, create boundaries and understand that and guard their time. But I, I know it's kind of tough when the market's rough and you, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. But man, like there are some employers that won't respect your time. Like, for example, um, I wouldn't recommend any junior developer take a fi like five hours to do a take home project. Um, I think that's ridiculous, even for a junior developer. Um, I, you know, for a take home project to be able to pair it with a code review and then do some coding challenges, if they are going to give their time, I think is reasonable. But man, there are like, there are five plus hour take home projects, which is crazy. Um, I don't know. I'm under the belief that a lot of people need to value their time a little bit more. All right, a bit nerve-wracking, but manageable. If I'm honest, my answer to nearly any question they might ask, why this implementation, why that library, why store the data this way would be because that's the only way I know how to do it. And that, okay, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a little bit more before I react so much, but um, th this is a big one. Like, this is where a lot of junior developers are at, and this is a problem. This is why I completely shut down the question for most junior developers what is the conventional way to do it who gives a shit just solve the damn problem and then solve it better next time analyze your code could it be more readable try going back into your code a month later like for your personal projects is it hard to grasp what's going on maybe that reflects like maybe you've have a lack of comments where there should be comments maybe you have too many comments kind of just like really lengthening a lot of your code execution and, and your implementation and it's just hard to read because it's just spread out too much maybe your function names are bad like there are, are so many things that you can analyze your code to improve it in terms of readability but then what happens if you're building an app that takes in a bunch of data how slow is it right like solve it first have your app crash lag do whatever and then optimize afterwards 
I think way too many people think that they're going to be more marketable by trying to learn the most conventional thing possible. And one thing you realize about conventions is context matters. The problem itself matters. The specific problem that you're trying to solve in the industry with the type of app that you're trying to build, like this matters. You're not going to get some global conventional thing. Like even like don't repeat yourself with your code is garbage advice. It just is. It's good for newer developers to abstract their problems, be able to create reusable chunks. But it it creates, it also has complications that come with constantly abstracting every piece of code. And like, even when people are writing tests, like you explicitly want to repeat some of your code to make your tests more clear, to make your requirements clear, to make it very clear what the hell this function does. And people will take this paradigm, this way of thinking to never repeat your code and apply it everywhere. The problem is people are looking for this, these generic templates and they apply it to everything in programming. That's why junior developers are bad. You're supposed to be bad, but I, I want you to think past this and stop, like just solve way more problems. Let the conventions, conventions develop naturally. Let abstractions come naturally. All right, now I'm done venting. We're gonna continue, but I do think this is a real problem. I was nervous, but hopefully, as I started the fourth and final round, I opened my VS Code window, shared my screen, and started discussing my design implementation. I even threw in a cheeky reference to a potential security vulnerability. It's safe to say I was feeling smug. And then the dreaded words. We'll move to the live coding portion of the interview now. <laughs> I like that. That's a... Man, people are better at memes than I am. I feel like I don't have the right timing for memes. I'm trying to get better at it. That's why I'm on Twitter. I shared my screen instantly and felt a pang of regret. One of the interviewers began explaining the extension exercise, which to be fair, was entirely reasonable and achievable, but my brain hit full panic mode. I was so unprepared that I haven't even initialized my virtual environment. Uh-oh. They encouraged me to take a, a breath and consult the readme. I took their advice, but the basics felt miles away. I suddenly couldn't remember how to slice a string or extract an object from an array using a unique key. These were things I did every day, but something about the pressure of doing it live unprepared and was making me crumble. Listen, I, I think like last month, I think it was last month, I interviewed for a senior position. I literally did the exact same thing that you just did. I... Soldiered on, trying to fake calm as I began sweating in places humankind had yet to discover could even sweat. At least if this whole coding thing didn't work out, I could make history as a patient zero in a clinical trial. Okay. The interviewers were endlessly patient, offering gentle hints and encouraging questions, but every fiber in me wanted to hit and call and sprint upstairs to the safety of my bed. What I learned, the worst case... Let's, let's pause there. This is... This is pretty relatable. And I'm sure, you know, even in chat, there are a lot of people that probably can relate to this. But this is something, with, like, here's, here's the truth of it. Like, if you don't interview often, you don't practice interviews, even if it's not real interviews, if you don't do mock interviews, you're going to get rusty and it's going to be easy to get anxious. If you got anxious with your first interview, you might just be someone that gets anxious with interviews. A lot of people that do get anxious with interviews, they just practice. Mock interviews are really good for this. But um, yeah, this is this is tough. And to me, I, I feel like I'm a bad interviewer because I get anxious. What I discovered that I need, and you have to discover like what helps you, but for me... I need to know that I'm doing a live coding interview and I need to work on a project 20 to 30 minutes before I do the interview. For me, I don't like, so what can happen is like, it can be natural to feel anxious and nervous, but the thing you don't want to happen is it, for it to snowball where you start blanking and then it gets worse and worse and worse. To prevent that from happening, I practice beforehand, or I just code beforehand. It just warms up my brain to think about coding problems. That works for me, and you have to think about what works for you. What I learned. The worst case scenario happened. Did I drop dead? No. Did the interview panel laugh me out of town? Also no. Was I immediately blacklisted from every job in a 50 mile radius? It's unconfirmed, but I believe the answer is no. Managing it alone would be too difficult. 
There's an odd comfort in that because it can only happen for the first time once. If I do dreadfully in the following live coding assessment, at least I will have lived experience to draw upon. It also taught me exactly what not to do. I probably made every rookie mistake in the book. I jumped straight into solution mode, skipped over clarifying questions, didn't even reread the instructions. But now, thanks to that experience, I have an inbuilt reminder seared in my brain. Take a breath, think it through, focus on the approach, not just the solution. Most surprisingly, the experience gave me courage. Since the first stumble, I've tackled all kinds of technical assessments, system design interviews, theory meets code quizzes, and even rapid fire React hooks questions in JavaScript. Some I bombed, but many I didn't. This exposure therapy has been a game changer. I no longer exclude myself from applying for those unicorn dream jobs because they require five stage interviews. Plus, I've started spotting the patterns, the real skills they're testing for, and refining my approach each time. So next time you bomb a tactical challenge, dust yourself off, reopen those endless leak code tabs. Stop it. No, stop this. Stop this. We'll, we'll talk about this in a second. And just like unit testing, keep iterating until all the tests pass. Um, okay. We're just going to address this. Like, th this is another generic piece of advice. Like, just grind a leak code. Don't do this. Stop it. Stop it. Just stop it. Th there are so many people that are just really bad at programming, and all they do is spend time with leak code problems. You're, you're not applying for fame companies with... Like, if, if you are experiencing this amount of anxiety in the initially, and you are... Um, like this is one of your first interviews, like you shouldn't be grinding a leak code. J just stop it. You're going to have way more growth with project work. You're going to pair some leak code problems. Or you're going to pair some DSA challenges on the side, depending on the path that you're trying to choose. But majority of your time is spending, um, it, majority of your time is spent building projects. That's what's going to help you grow significantly. So I just want to throw that out there because there are still people to this day without any professional experience grinding a leak code. Stop it. Um, but yeah, this, I, I, I think it's a good article. Um, and I feel like it resonates with a lot of people. It resonated with me. And the only, so like the main solution is just exposure. And I would even argue if you're trying to do like 50 mock interviews, I would, I think you're even building up a pattern of like, why am I doing these mock interviews so I won't bomb the real interview? What And I think that can build up some anxiety if you overdo that, right? Because um, if that's like the primary strategy that you have is to do a bunch of mock interviews to extinguish the anxiety so I never have it, right? That's, that's not what you want to do. You want to experience that anxiety and you want to then get past it and then overcome it and then realize you didn't drop dead. That's the key thing. Exposure is really good. Exposure is fantastic for getting past the interview nerves. Do more interviews, practice, you will get used to it. Um, and not necessarily fully used to it, but I, I think you'll get a lot more comfortable very quickly. It won't take a lot of interviews, and most people are much better. Like They probably reduce their anxiety by 50% after one after one bad interview. So a lot of people need to hear this. Uh, and the biggest problem, I'm just going to emphasize one last time, is people will not apply at all. And part of getting better with the job search is getting involved with the application process sooner so that you can get exposure, you can get uh, a feel for what you're being tested over, the dynamics of a uh, coding interview, what it's like, what they're looking for, some uh, quirks that you have that you need to iron out in a coding interview, some triggers that might be triggering some of that anxiety. You can kind of go back and analyze that. But you just need to get exposure to it so you can start learning because a job search is tough because there's so much to learn about it and learn about your presentation and how you come across. Not only are you learning more about the industry once you start applying for jobs, but you're learning how you fit into the industry and how you potentially don't and some flaws that you gotta work at, uh, work on. But it all comes with exposure and that's it. So I think a lot of people need to hear this. Emily, good job. I will link this in the video description.